Hello, everybody. My name is Andy, and my colleague Pooja and I will be presenting to you today on behalf of the Gate Assist team, one of the undergraduate CBIT teams. Gate Assist is one of the most common gait disorders associated with cerebral palsy. As you can see from this video, scissor gait presents as a crossing of the legs while walking. As a patient attempts to walk, their legs provide a barrier which often causes an increase in trips and falls. Additionally, other symptoms such as toe dragging, crouching, and inward rotation occur. In the United States alone, there are nearly 80,000 cerebral palsy patients who suffer from the effects of scissor gait. Additionally, other neurological disorders such as multiple sclerosis or spinal cord tumors can cause an estimated 50,000 additional cases of scissor gait. Currently, there are very few solutions on the market and those that exist are uncomfortable, expensive, and are not able to be worn up and down stairs or on uneven terrain. Therefore, there is a need to reduce the crossing of the legs, which is caused by scissor gait, in order to improve balance, allowing for greater independence and increased participation in daily activities. Our solution is a simple orthosis, which consists of two lightweight plastic blocks, which are attached by a metallic bolt, which slides along a C-shaped rail as the patient walks. As you can see, the device is attached to the patient using elastic straps around the thighs, and is further secured using a suspension system, which can be attached to the patient's belt. Both of these features are adjustable. The device moves easily with the patient throughout their gait cycle. It is lightweight and can be worn on uneven terrain. And as you can see, it can be worn walking up and down stairs. It's very important that we are able to customize this device to a wide range of patients, ranging from young children through adults. The first aspect of customization is the rail length. The rail length determines the maximum stride that a patient can have. So based off of a patient's height, we're able to determine their ideal rail length and fit them accordingly. Additionally, we are customizing the width using insertable blocks to make the device wider. This is extremely important because if a device is too wide, it hinders the patient's ability to walk. If a device is too thin, it does not mitigate the effects of scissor gate effectively. It's hard to estimate the ideal width for a patient, so we've developed a sizing device for use by physical therapists. This device will be turned by a key that the physical therapist will use, and the patient can try the device out at varying widths. They'll perform several gait tests, and based off of their performance and their comments, the physical therapist will fit them to the ideal size. This size will then be sent back to the manufacturer, and a customized device will be made for the patient. We have begun a clinical trial at the Kennedy Krieger Institute, and the trial is essentially a short test to observe the gait pattern and to quantify the improvement in balance using our device. Here is a video from our study. The patient walks a short distance down the gait right mat with and without our orthosis. Uh, videos and gait pattern are recorded, and once the test is complete, the patient and their parents have an opportunity to provide some feedback on our device. From the video, you have clearly seen that the patient has an increased gap between their legs whilst wearing the device. There is, this is also represented in our data. Firstly, we shall discuss the base of support, which is a measure of the separation between the legs and a measure of stability. The wider the base of support, uh, this indicates a greater stability. The data clearly shows that there is an increased base of support when using our device, thus increasing the stability of the patient. Secondly, we shall also discuss swing time percentage, which is the amount of time a, pati a patient spends in swing during a gait, uh, the average stride. Uh, for a person with a normal gait, this is around 40% of every stride. People with reduced balance, for example, patients with scissor gait, spend less time in swing to compensate for their lack of balance. From this data, we see a clear increase in swing time percentage moving towards the 40% mark, indicating improved balance when using gait assist. As part of the study, we also collected feedback from the patients and their parents, as these are some of the key stakeholders. All the patients who used the device said it was comfortable, and two out of the three said that they would wear it to school as is. The third wanted us to make some changes to the device to make it less conspicuous so as to avoid questions. The team is currently working on solutions to combat this. All the parents said that they would want their children to wear this device to school. 
Gate Assist aims to increase the patient's engagement with their environments. So we have done some self-testing on the device to determine how well it functions in daily use scenarios. Several team members wore the device throughout their day, making no changes to their daily routine. Stairs and other hilly terrain were comfortable to walk on, and the team members who did this testing wore the device for up to eight hours without any discomfort. Our device is intended for daily use, and so the durability of the front surface is also key. We would require a material with a low friction coefficient and probably a material that can be injection molded. So at the moment, these are our three contenders for what we could manufacture the device from. So we have high-density polyethylene, nalotron, and acetyl. Uh, we ran some fatigue testing on a device that was made out of um, high-density polyethylene. It ran for 100,000 cycles, and that's equivalent to about 12 days of daily activities. And here are some preliminary results. Uh, I would like to conclude by talking you through our future plans and our pathway to implementation. So currently we received a provisional patent in May 2015 and are filing for a full patent for our device. Uh, we aim to complete the clinical trial and then seek FDA approval as a class one medical device. After this, we would want to launch a pilot study of about 100 patients to see how the device functions in daily use. And to continue with this project, we are seeking funding. We believe that gate assist can improve the lives of scissor gate patients one step at a time. Thank you for listening. So we don't have a quick release mechanism, but the buckles on the side of the device are very easy to release. Um, so you're able to clip yourself out of it um, if you're feeling you know, uncomfortable, and then you're able to move your legs um, freely. We haven't tested a subject falling. Um, like in our trial, there's no way for the subject to fall. Um, additionally, if a subject currently uses um, another assistive device, such as a walker, they could use that in conjunction with our device if balance um, is an added question for them. Uh, another thing is that the elastic straps actually allow you to move, widen your support if needed in case you trip, so you're not restricted to just the width. You can always go wider, but what we wanted was them to not cross their legs. What other interventions are you going to compare to to demonstrate efficacy? Um, so we're mainly looking at the swash brace. Um, and with the swash brace, we see very low patient compliance. Um, and it's very difficult for the patients uh, to really walk with the device on because it's a very heavy device. Um, so they use it more for therapeutic purposes than for daily use. Are you going to look at any non-brace? Uh, interventions to compare? Uh, currently, we're only looking at the swash brace. Okay, thank you.